Hello, good afternoon, everybody. How's everybody doing today? Okay, so I am going to teach you guys how to paint this Highlander cow from start to end. All right, I'm gonna show you guys what to do um, when you guys get your materials and so forth, okay? So welcome, welcome. So yes, today we are doing the Highlander cow. So we're gonna be doing the painting tutorial. So in, when you request for your supplies, all right, so yeah, so this is the image that we're gonna be doing. So that's just a reference for me. So you guys will be getting the supply list, okay? Um, the cam, I got a black canvas. So you guys can use any kind of canvas you want. I got a black canvas today, so I'm going to show you guys how I'm going to be using that. If you get a white canvas, it's more than fine because then you guys can um, paint your background whatever color you like to paint it, okay? So this is the supply list, all right? So here is just telling me what supplies I need. Um, what I'm going to be using is actually, let me, let me grab it again. Let me grab the white paint. All right, so I have some white paint here. So you're going to need, um, it says chalky gesso black, that's only if you have a white canvas and you want to paint your whole background black first, but you don't have to do that if you don't want a black background. Um, but I am grabbing some white paint, alright, so I'm grabbing some titanium white. I'm grabbing, now all, I'm using all deco art, so deco art is what I'm using. I'm using burnt um, amber, which I like to call my dark chocolate. I am using burnt sienna, which I like to call just my regular chocolate. And then I have honey brown, which is like a light milk chocolate. So yep. Yeah, uh, just gonna make them. And we're gonna have black, regular black paint, which again we always use. And then you guys can choose a glitter. Oh, I'm sorry, and Tuscan red. So Tuscan red. I'm also using Tuscan red from Deco Art. And then you guys can choose a glitter for later on. So I have two glitters. I have a clear crystal ball illusion, but since I am putting them on to the crystal balls, I, I also have a red or bewitching red one, which I might be using instead, all right? So that's when you get the, the list, all right? And then you guys will be choosing your canvas size tracer. So when you guys get your tracer, it is, you can print it out in, different sheets and it tells you where everything goes. So here it says top left. So I'm gonna put that to the top. This one is the top right. Now it has the breakage of lines so that you know where you can overlap your image. Okay. And then from there I overlap my image. I grab some tape. So you can grab clear tape. I always have paint this tape nearby. And you just put a little bit of tape. I only put like one or two on each sheet, just like so. All right. And then you also have your two bottom ones. So I'll tape these two together first. Okay, you can just lining it up. Sometimes you think it's straight, but that's why we have the straight line. I just want to go over that line just a little bit more. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Again, just grabbing my paint to tape, and you notice I'm not putting that much paint to tape, I'm just putting it down. Okay, making sure my paper is straight. Sometimes I'm never really straight, so. And then I'm going to take this, and you have the blue line that's straight across, and I'm going to line that up here. Just like so. All right, so yes, I'm using a black canvas. So if you're using a black canvas, it's fine. Um, you might be asking, but now you're gonna be tracing with the graphite paper. How are you gonna see the lines? And I'll tell you in a second how we're gonna do that, okay? So I'm just putting a couple pieces of tape. All right, so that's my full tracer. So then I build that, all right? So I'm just gonna put that in my lap for one second. So then we have graphite paper, so I get like, 
eight by ten sheets and I just get them off of Amazon. Um they sell like a pack of a hundred for like ten bucks. So which is pretty cool. Alright. So I just got those off of Amazon. And what's great about graphite paper is they are reusable. So I just place them down, shiny side down. So there's going to be two sides. There's going to be a black shiny side. That's where all the graphite is. And if you guys don't know what graphite actually is, graphite actually is the lead of your pencil, right? So you have a pencil. We call that graphite. And I'm getting a little into my terminology with you guys, but I hope you find that okay. Um, I do do that for a living. I teach my kids art. I do teach high school art if you don't know. I'm just going to tape these down so that I know that they stay down. Just like so. So now that this shiny side is down, I'm going to take my tracer and lay my tracer flat on my canvas. Make sure everything is all lined up. All right, and then I can just take a pencil. Again, graphite paper. Okay, perfect. Perfect, 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 perfect. I could just take a pencil. I could take any pencil I have here. I'm missing pencils. I think two little ones, that's my pencil. My niece and my nephew like to come into my, my office and like to paint with me. So I'm only going to be tracing what I need. So like these little snowflakes, I really don't care about. So I know they're on there. I'm only going to be tracing what I really just need. I'm tracing the, the hat. And you don't have to trace every single detail. So I'm tracing the hat. I'm only tracing the big shapes. I'm tracing the horn. You know, one and on the side. And again, well, where it comes to doing, I guess, cows have hair, the hair, the shaggy part. I'm only concerned about the big shape. So I'm going to draw in just the big shape. And I'm going to show you guys how to color block in these shapes first. All right, before we um, use all the different lines. So we're not doing lines first, we're just doing color blocking. And I'll show you how to do that first. And then I will show you how to get the strands of the hair in. I want to get his nose in. His mouth. His nostrils. And what's great with the black canvas is some parts are going to be black and we're really not going to have to worry about that part. If you can, if you want to. We gotta make sure we get his eye. And then we have the ornaments. So you guys can change whatever you want to. So if you want to change this up, if you don't want ornaments and you want maybe light bolts or hang something else up on here, you guys can. What's great is about the ornaments is you can write names on the ornaments. Uh, you can write kids' names, you can write your family's names, and just be creative with that. Go straight down and see if I'm missing anything. Part of the hat over here. I 
missing the face. Can't forget the face, right? Okay. Just look at it. All right. And then I can move. And then I can lift this up. Well, you might not be able to see it on the black canvas, but then we're going to be able to use the white. some of it. Okay, one minute. got some lines now, but I did not. I'm gonna try this one. This one seems like it's higher quality and bigger. Sorry, we gotta go through that again. If you're watching, the replay of this. You could probably just skip through this part. Skip through the first part. I will probably, when I edit the video, I will probably delete that. <laughs> See? We showing you guys the struggle. If that doesn't work, then it's on to plan B. And then I'll tell you what plan B is. Well, this is plan B, I guess, then we'll on to plan C. And then I'll tell you what plan C will be. Well, first I want to make sure it's tracing, so I'm just going to go down here in the corner by all these balls. Let's see those tracing. It's going on really just black. Black on black. Time for plan B. So black tracing paper out. <laughs> so, sorry about that. Alright, so let's go to plan B. So plan B is we were tearing that paper around. All right, so we're going to, what you guys can do is, if you have crayons, I know I have crayons, so I have children that come to visit me. I'm actually going to use a yellow crayon. So what you can do is on the back side, you need a crayon. It's just go around and you should see where your lines are from the opposite side. I'm only coloring where the lines would actually be. You can also use a white ch chalk pen, not pen, I'm sorry, pencil, like um, a charcoal pencil for this part. Which might be a lot better, but I'm hoping that the wax will stick to the canvas.
understand because it's yellow, it'll sh show up. So I would use like a yellow or a white, even if you have pastels, especially if you have like pastels, definitely use pastels. Seems like an extra step, but that is okay because we're going to be able to get onto the black canvas. And the wax, once you start using the pencil again, the wax should stick a little bit, but not much. So I'm just trying to put some extra pressure down so I can see where I'm putting putting my lines. So I'm just putting a lot of extra pressure down as I'm doing this. I can actually see my lines. I don't know if they sell white graphite paper. I should look into that. If you guys know, just let me know. So I'm probably, I guess, like, like I said, I'm going to delete <laughs> all the mistakes from the beginning in the replay. have a white pencil to even do this I mean, a lot of my materials are at work so I teach it all so I bring it to work with me Thank you for being so patient with me. I've been trying to fuss with this camera. I gotta find something that gives the whole view. Alright, so I see most of it. So what I'm going to do next is so that I can actually see it is go over my lines with a white epoxy pen. So these are just acrylic paint pens. Just gonna go over my lines. Just 
so I can see it. I'm sorry, just bear with me. I'm like still looking for a line. That's one star. I just got to draw in where his shoulders would be and his body would be. So, perfect. Let me try to make this camera a little high for you guys so you guys can visibly see what I'm doing here. I wish I could switch it on here. photo. Okay. All right, so I wish I was able to do it this way for you guys, because then you guys would be able to see the whole thing. I just have to adjust my canvas and Alright, maybe that's a little better. That might be a little better. Let me bring my light in a little closer for you guys. Okay. Alright, so I want to paint this. I'm going to do my red first. All right. All right. So again, I'm just waiting for the paint to dry a little bit on there. All right. So for red, I'm using um, Tuscan Red by Deco Art. All right. So we're gonna probably be getting two coats of red. All right. So you guys can choose whatever size. So I'm using a couple different sizes. I'm going to be using a big flat brush, a medium flat brush, and a round, and a detailed brush. So right now I'm just going in with a medium flat brush. All right. And I want to paint in. All right. It's okay to go over the lines you just created. 
So again, if you guys are doing this on a, it's probably better that you guys are doing these on a white canvas. If we just saw the struggle. I'm telling you, struggle is real when you want to be an artist. All right. So I'm doing the red part first only because it's going to need two layers. Because when you are painting on a black canvas, it kind of sucks it up a lot. And red gets sucked into a canvas a lot. For some reason, red, red is a trouble color. Like, I say that because, especially like ceramics, there's, you can't use like a true red glaze on a pot. Um, a lot of companies don't even make true red um colors because it burns it's quite funny i learned that when i was in school and i wanted a red color and the teacher came she came to me like we're very sorry but we don't have red i'm like oh why because it burns it turns black in the kiln i was like oh that's quite funny and like that's something like you just don't know so red is a trouble color. You can make your ornaments any color you like. All right. So I'm just doing them all red. So if you want to make them multicolor, have fun with that. All right, so I just got it, all my red. So that's gonna have to dry. In the meantime, we're gonna do some color blocking. So color blocking allows there to be a background color. So I'm gonna start off with the very light honey brown that I have, which is, I'm calling it the light milk chocolate. Always make sure you shake up your colors. All right. Actually, let me start off with this one, the red burnt on the burnt piano, actually. Now you know what I'm gonna solve the honey one. So the honey one is just going to go in this area right here. So what this does, it gives you, it gives you an undertone. So when you're making like hair, which we will be doing, we will be, um, you go over the eye it's perfectly fine because we can always use black to recreate it um especially hair like you won't notice the black canvas in the background or the white canvas in the background so it kind of you know helps you color in the the hair part all right so that's where the lightness one is going to go all right do you need two, two, two um, tones, two layers? No, because it's only going, we're only color blocking. And then I'm gonna go to the medium one, which is the burnt sienna. And 
And I did notice that I forgot a whole area of this painting. So I forgot the other part of the horn. My apologies, this paints are brand new. So when I go to paint parties, I buy a bunch of them. I buy like four or five of them at a time. Because when you're doing a paint party, um, five, I guess four to five people can, you can get off of one bottle. Which is quite interesting, especially if you're doing like a paint party of 10, then you know you're going to need two bottles, but I always double it because you don't know how much paint somebody actually uses. Not everybody knows how to use paint properly, and they'll put a thick layer, which is why I always say try to put a thin layer. Alright, so we're doing color black, so we want to make sure we're doing a thin layer. So I'm doing the burnt sienna right here next to it. And using these three different colors will also help us differentiate the shapes when we're doing the hair. It's okay to overlap a little bit. So you can put a thin layer down. I really should not see this. I guess I'm gonna have to move the camera as I move. Perfectly okay. Perfect. Um, you know what? This part should have been the burnt on the sienna. I mean, but that's okay. I'll just do it like that. It's fine. I'm gonna go back to the light brown first. I'm just painting the nose area right here. So this part you might need two layers because this is actually just the nose. This is not being colored by hair. You might want to do this with two layers. I don't know about you guys, but I always find this part so relaxable just painting. And his mouth down here. I will show you guys how to do the nose. But let me just get in all the other colors first. Then I'm using burnt umber, which is the darker one. I'm going to use a, a little bit bigger brush. I'm going to paint that in this way.
Yeah, make sure you guys are putting in a thin layer. That the layer is not so thick. Also, we're doing thin layer because we don't want them to actually dry. Right? Because if it doesn't dry, then we can't paint on top of it. Using you guys along with me. And then I'm blocking in the body with the dark chocolate as well. There's actually a color called dark chocolate. I think I have a big bottle of it. To the little long one. Wipe off my brush nice and clean. Make sure I'm filling it in. Spreading out my layers. So if you guys are hopping on, you guys can say hello. If you're on the live, just say hi. I love to say hi back. So all my color blocking is done. All right, so I think I'm gonna go back to the red real fast. I think I'm going to add my second layer of red in. There, and then go down to the 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 bowls. Yeah, that's second layer in. I think this one just got a little bit bigger. That's perfectly okay. We will fix that. And when you do the second layer, you notice how much brighter the red gets which is what we're looking for. If you can't find Tuscan red, there's also one called Santa red, which is, would probably be perfect for this. Alright, so my red, is, my red is in. next color I'm going to use is white. So I'm going to grab some more white. So let me show you what I'm going to do over here. I'm going to start with the horn and then I'll show you what else I'm going to do with the white. Alright. Try to get, get all that right out of my, my palette. So I'm going to take the middle brown first and mix it with the honey brown. And I'm just going to make a line underneath, just like that, All right? I'm then going to take my white, I'm not even cleaning my brush, I'm just going to take my white and kind of go into it. 
So it kind of makes it more of like a beige is cream color. And doing the dark on the bottom helps give that color. Which is fun. Now, sometimes we'll say to ourselves, these are not looking so hot. That is perfectly okay. I always say it will never look good until we are completely done. All right, and I'm just going to go in with the middle brown and just add it towards the bottom, just like that. And then do the same thing on this side. We have a little bit of depth line on this side. And when that dries, if you want to add a little bit more white to it, you guys can add a little bit more white to it. Okay, so I'm going to take next a round brush, just clean off these brushes, take a sip of my water. All right, coming back to his hat, I'm going to take my round brush. Some artists will tell you this is a no-no, but it's okay. We're going to, you guys can just tap it in. And what this does will help give, just be careful, like the hat's still wet on top. So you might want to wait for that part to dry first. You can tap it in to give it texture. Or you can do a swirl and just go in a circular motion and this will help give it texture as well. All right, so you can figure out which way you want to do it. I like to do the swirl. I'm not going towards the red part yet because I know that part's still a little bit wet. And I'm just kind of stay here. And it's okay if you come down a little bit. So I noticed that the edge of that is still wet. So I'm gonna let that part dry. So I'm gonna come down to over here to where we made the little ball for the hat and just want a circular motion. I like the fact that it, you know, makes it look a little fluffy. All right, so for the, let me go to the nose. So I'm not even washing off my brush yet because I want to have a little bit of white. I'm not finished with that part. I'll go back to that part towards the end. So I'm gonna take a little bit of the white and not even, no, no white. You know, still taking my round brush. I'm gonna clean that off. Clean off my round brush. I'm gonna go in with a little bit of the honey and just a drop of the red. Honey and red. To make like this rosy color. And I'm gonna do that for this part of the nose. Alright, if you feel like you can add a little bit more red, go for it. Again, it's okay if you guys go over your nose, nostrils, because we can always paint those back in with black. Thank you. 
So that might need a second coat, we'll see. I'm rinsing off my round brush, going back into my white and painting in my whole candy cane. All right, so when you, it's gonna be a lot easier when you guys kind of do it this way when you paint in a whole candy cane, trust me. Instead of doing it, block by block, white, red, white, red. It's easier if you just do it this way. All right, so I'm gonna rinse off my brush one more time. I'm gonna go back to the honey and I'm gonna do my second coat here on my nose. Let me get the other brush. And this is all going to be outlined, so if it seems a little messy at first, it's okay. We're going to be outlining all of this with black. So don't get scared. I just dropped some paper. Just lift it up. And then a little bit of that rose color in there to fix it. Just like so. Okay. I think this part is still wet. So yeah, I had such a thick layer, so you know, let me take some of that red off. So that it dries. Okay. All right, so we're gonna get into doing the lines. All right, so I'm going to be using a round brush, all right? So first, I'm going to go into um, the honey brown. And you just want to kind of come in and just drag them down. And you can go in different directions. If that brush is not working for you, I'm going to cool way of doing it is taking a flat brush and holding it on the side and just drag it down quickly. Okay. So you guys can choose which brush you guys are going to be more comfortable with doing this. Now, if you go outside your lines, that is perfectly fine. You can even go up if you want to do it that way. All right, you just want to make sure you guys are going with the shape. All right. Now, I want to go in with the regular chocolate brown. I want to kind of bring that in. So I'm just creating texture with the different layers of rounds.
Oops, I didn't draw my flash. It came out crappy. I don't think this plot is dry yet, so I'm gonna go back to that. You'll know that some parts are not dry, and then you'll be like, oops. If you want to be really cool and give him different hair colors, go for it. Now for the body, don't overdo it with the body. I right, just go in. Let me add some wash on the brown. Make sure you have more of the body down there. And then go in with the regular brown in between those real fast. Again, I'm not overdoing it too much. Okay. I still have to come in this area. I'm just figuring that out in my head at the first before I lay the color down i think it's still wet yeah so you want this part to be completely dry before you head in with the layering of the different colors yeah so this part is not dry at all yet so we're gonna leave that too kind of break in. All right, so while I'm waiting for this area to dry, um, what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna get a clean brush, All right? Because my candy cane should be dry by now. And I am going to start adding in the red. So I like to curve the lines so that the candy cane looks a little rounded. And when I do that, it's like larger on one side and it's skinny on the other side. It's perfectly fine. Kind of takes you back to making candy canes when we were kids. He uses straight lines, he uses curved lines. Got my candy cane all done. I'm gonna come back to my white, since this is all dry up here. I'm gonna go back over this part with white. Got a little bit of pink in there. That's okay, we'll go back over that. This part is still wet. Okay. I'm going to use black. I'm not going to fully outline everything yet, but I just want to fix the eye. Okay, what I call this one. All right, so I'm going to go in with my rounded brush. All right, so I'm going to go in and create the eye. All 
and my oil of fixed the nostrils. They're like a, an S with a big bottom. Let's see, the other one. Um, so you also can add some white highlights into the hair. Not a whole lot. Just here and there. Be fixing most of this part here once it all dries. I'm not adding the white to the body, I'm just adding it to the top. All right. Then with a liner brush, that's the skinnier brush. All right, I'm gonna take some white and add a line to the eye to give it a highlight. Take the back of the brush and dot it. That's my highlight for my eye. All right, so then we're gonna come back over this way to our ornaments. I kind of want to do the same thing, so I'm going to kind of want to like draw in some highlights and then take the back side and dot, dot, and dot. All right, okay, so for the top part, you guys, if you have a silver pen, use a silver pen. I'm just going to use the white paint. to fill in the top of the ornaments. Okay, for the string part, we're waiting for stuff to dry. All right, going back to the horn, I wanna add some white, just like that. I'm going to do it to the other horn too. Just add a line of white. All right, going in over here to see if it dried. Make sure that stays nice and white. I'm still waiting for this to dry. <laughs> so. All right, let me go back to the eye area before we add our final touches. All right, so we're going to go back in. I'm going to add some. Going back and forth between the dark chocolate, the light chocolate. I just added some more hairs because I feel like he needs them. All right. I'm also going to make him have some hair sticking up here. And then I have some hair sticking out on each side. Be the messy hair, don't care kind of cow. Okay. I think he looks good by now. Oops. All right. Now we can go in with our black. Now you guys can use a liner brush if you prefer to use a liner brush. I'm going to go in with just the round brush at first. All right, so I want to go in where I started and I'm not tracing the entire cap black, so I'm like skipping a little bit. Just to kind of, especially like where I put the hair. 
just to give it a little bit of shape with the black. Okay. I'm going to go in with my thin, bigger brush. Let me just make sure it's nice and clean. I like to use this side. So I have to kind of get it like this. Okay, so let me go back this way. So if you feel like you didn't make this part too clean, this is where this part will come in perfect. Yeah. You know, to clean that part up. You know, yes, it's against a black canvas, so it'll kind of clean that part up if you need to clean that part up. All right, so for him himself, I didn't add that much black before, let me actually add a little bit more. Black bottle. Okay. So I'm going to go in and just kind of trace around him a little bit. All right. But at the same time, kind of come up in certain areas to show the separation of where the hair was. Just like so. Again, I'm not doing it every, I'm not doing like a perfect straight line. I'm just kind of going in like so. Just to show the separation. Tracing his body out just to clean that up. For this part, I'm just going to go around a little bit. I still like the way it looks. Again, just to clean that up a little bit. All right, so next is the candy cane. We're going to be tracing out this nose area. I'm sorry for all the crazy angles. Underneath his lip, the side of his face. Going back to the rounded brush, because I want to clean up these ornaments a little bit, right? I'm just going to go around the ornament with the black. Just cleaning it up. All right, so for the strings, I'm going to go back in with the white. 
and bring that up until it overlaps the one. All right, until it overlaps the one. Just like so. And then I'm just going to do my last bit of highlighting and then I'm going to do the snow. And now snow. So the snow is the fun part. I just take a back of a brush. I dip it in the white. I'll show you because I'm going to start up here in this corner. I got a little bit of wetness here. And I like doing it this way because it bounces. And then as I do it, you get different sizes. All right. You guys can put some dots on him. Right, put some dots on the hat. If you want to go overboard with them, have a lot of fun adding as much snow as you want. All right. And then the last and final touch is, well, first let me fix this eye. And a little crease for the eye here and here. Next is the fun part, is glitter. So I think I'm gonna use this Holographic Illusion Bewitching Red. So I picked this color up. All right. So I'm gonna put the glitter all right, so when you put the glitter on, it's going to look white. So don't get scared if you see white. Let me actually clean this brush off. Okay. Make sure it's completely dry. Right. Oops. Let's go to the ornaments. So it comes out like that onto your palette. And it's going to go onto your ornament white. Don't be scared. It's going to dry completely um, with just sparkles. And make sure your paint is dry. All right. I'm not going to touch the highlighted area. Do just the red spot. Right, and then that's it. I use a gel If you want to add more, like if you want to add some more glitter to the hat area, go for it. Let's make it as glittery as possible. You can even use your fingers. And again, when that dries, it's going to be completely dry. All right, so I want to say thank you, everybody. And so let me just show you guys from up above. Sorry for such a bad angle. All right. All right, guys. Thank you. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And hope to see you next time. Have a great day.